What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host, and it is the Thursday night DFS and gambling preview. And joining us to take a look at Colts and Titans, the managing editor of Sportsline and CBS's fantasy operation. He's on a tear. Are you on a tear right now? I think he's on a tear right now. RJ White, what's up, buddy? Not much. How you doing? Glad that uh, Masters Week is finally here. Yeah, we got. Um, <clears throat> we're recording this in the break on Thursday. Uh, the guys who run Augusta, we, we would never criticize because they do a wonderful job. Um, I didn't see the radar coming. Who could have seen? Who could have seen this giant line of storms coming on Thursday? And so, guys had to go out, hit their tee shots, and uh, then got delayed. And now we can't get our bets in. We can't get extra bets in because I would have spent the um, the uh, the rain delay getting a bet in. Which, what are you gonna do? I guess we should have to bet on Thursday night football. Colts. At the Titans. And by the way, go listen to the First Cup podcast. They all have recaps. Kyle Porter actually followed Tiger Woods, Adam Scott, and Freddie Couples around on uh, the Tuesday or the Wednesday practice round, I think, which is incredible. Like an empty Masters, um, uh, you know, golf course. And they'll have round by round recaps every single day. Colts and Titans. It is a pick em now on William Hill. The over under is set at 48 and a half. Um, actually juiced towards the visiting team, Indianapolis. I'd seen it in some spots. It got to like Indy minus one and a half, maybe, which is kind of crazy. Trend looking, trend spotting, I guess. Indy, five and three straight up, four and four against the spread, four and four to the over and under. Tennessee, six and two straight up, three and five against the spread, and five, two and one to the over. They've been a big time over team. Um, in the matchup between the coaches, Frank Reich and Mike Frabel, which has you know, been set in stone or set since 2018 Indy three and one against the spread and straight up in the series, Phillip rivers, 22 and nine against the spread on short rest, eight and three against the spread on Thursday. Hey, Phil, that is a uh, third all time since 2000 amongst 30, 39 quarterbacks, only better than rivers, Matt Ryan and Matt Hasselback. Oh, look, Carson Wentz makes the list. That's exciting. Ryan Tannehill, one and five against the spread in his last six starts on short rest. Tennessee overs are 14, three and one in the regular season since Ryan Tannehill took over. My goodness. They scored 20 plus points in 17 of their 18 games. Road team, six and two against the spread on Thursday this year, six and one against the spread on Thursday with short rest. Week one doesn't count. Does any of that matter to you, RJ? Yeah, I like that uh, Rivers has a great record on short rest and Tannehill doesn't. <clears throat> so um, I was already liking Indy anyway when the spread opened it at an Indy plus two and a half. I loved it. Um, it came down to one on Monday, and that's when I got to get my picks in on sports lines. So I felt bad getting the one because it bounced right back up to two. And so I'm like, oh, I could have got a better number. And then uh, Wednesday night, it finally made the expected move, you know, steam down to pick them. As you said, one in some places. This is a game where it's like strength versus strength. You know, both the Tennessee offense and Indy defense rank third in DVOA. They're two really good units. But the Tennessee offense only managed 228 yards against another good defense last week. So I don't trust them as much against the Indy defense as I would, you know, in another matchup. And the Tennessee defense is just terrible, despite stopping a Chicago offense that I don't know what they were doing in that game. They're still 32nd on third downs, even though they're not historically bad like they were going into the Chicago game. And then uh, 31st in red zone uh, per, uh, success rate. So it seems like a game where Indy does enough on both sides of the ball with Rivers playing well on short rest uh, to get the win here. So I would go Indy. Yeah, I, I think, um, and I wrote this in my picks column, which is up on CBSSports.com now, I believe, because I, for once, turned it on time. Um, I believe that um, now is kind of the time of year. And I think I, kind of, I think the last few weeks I sort of fell prey to this, like the biases, biases that we had coming into the year. Like we were doing really well against the spread. And I think I sort of fell into the, I'm going to keep riding like what, I, what was working early on in the season. And I wasn't adjusting quite as well. Um, I do think that like Indy would qualify as one of these spots. Like, you know, like I don't want to get color, I don't want to be color blinded by Indy, but I think that, the Colts are just a more well-rounded team. And if you look at the injury report, I mean, it's a, it's a world of difference, right? I mean, now look, not everybody for Tennessee is going to be out, but Jadavion Clowney is struggling to get back on the field. Uh, they're going to be missing a Dory Jackson. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're going to be missing uh, Adam Humphreys. Uh, we had AJ Brown who's on the injury report, but he's going to play. Corey Davis was on an NIR injury report. Just a bunch of guys banged up. And for the, Colts, the only guy they're going to be missing more than likely is Jack Doyle, who's out with a concussion. T.Y. Hilton's been cleared. He's back at full practice. Mo Ali Cox had full practice on Wednesday. He was questionable, but I mean, I would think that he's probably going to get back out there. So this team 
is at full strength and maybe more importantly than, than anything, uh, they're going to have Darius Leonard. They're, they're second against the run in DVOA on defense. If Darius Leonard doesn't play, I think that number, I would like, I, I would be curious to know the splits on DV rush div, defense DVOA with Darius Leonard out there with not, but this team can stop the run. If you can stop Derrick Henry from going wild, which is seems a little insane on a Thursday night, you can really limit just how dangerous Tennessee is or how efficient Tennessee is. And so I think, I, I think we can see some points, but I would take the Colts here as well. Um, any thoughts on the over under? Yeah. Um, I went back and forth. I would probably lean over, as you said, the Tennessee over seven money with Tannehill, <laughs> but this is more about any offense versus Tennessee defense. I think they can score a bunch of points here. So I don't love it either way. So I'm just playing the spread, but um, if I had to pick a side, I'd probably go with the over. So uh, one other thought on this game is that if you look at William Hill, you scroll, you go over to click futures and you scroll down, like I'm literally doing right now, the AFC South division, Tennessee is currently minus 200 and the Colts are plus 160. Is now the time to get in on the Colts, given that we think they're going to win, or would you just hold off and maybe, you know, if it's a close game, maybe they lose, you get a better price. Um, do you think they've emerged victorious? How do you think the division shakes out? Yeah, I think now is the perfect time to bet on the Colts because they obviously have the edge for the tiebreaker. This is the first game between these two teams this year. So um, you're sitting pretty if you have the Colts and they win this game. And if it's a minus 110, you know, pick them game, then plus 160 seems to be like a great value at this point. Is there any chance that um, the Tennessee defense comes around? I think we've seen a couple of teams like Buffalo, New Orleans. The Buffalo hadn't come around, but like I feel like like there's some teams whose de- we thought de- their defense would be good, and they haven't been good so far this year. But it's a weird season. Like New Orleans, like awesome against Tampa Bay on Sunday night. Maybe this is their defense starting to break out. Uh, Buffalo hasn't shown any signs of that. Seattle hadn't shown any signs of that. Uh, I, Tennessee, I think we thought would be better. But could it really just be Dean Pease and Jarrell Casey? And, and a couple of injuries in the secondary, that big of a difference? Yeah, you look at the guys they added, you know, during the offseason, it wasn't really pass rush oriented. They added Jadavian Clowney, which is a big name, but uh, we know his pass rushing numbers haven't been there. He's been more of a, an all-around guy. They added Vic Beasley. That didn't work out. They cut him. So maybe if he was a problem and his snaps were just atrocious, then then maybe that's just, just addition by subtraction there um, with the couple of guys that they cut over the last – week or so. So I guess it is possible, but you know, I, I didn't have high expectations for that defense coming in anyway. They have a few guys in the secondary. They have, you know, a couple of good players in the front seven, but yeah, Jeffrey Simmons is, is the guy, but they figured now that Jeffrey Simmons is emerging, they can get rid of Jarrell Casey. I don't know that that was smart. Um, so, cause they didn't really have anybody, I think to replace him and, and his production. So yeah, I don't have tie hopes for the defense moving forward. Um, and, but maybe in this game, you know, the Indy offense hasn't looked that great. So maybe they could have a good game here if the Indy offense just can't get their stuff together. Mm, okay all right let's uh take a quick break and we come back we will talk about some props and some dfs all right so player props i I feel like this game's gonna be fun is that is that insane no two good teams you know competing for first in the division i don't see why it wouldn't be fun it's a important game it's not like a jets denver game or anything like that jets pats was fun yeah, yeah. I don't oh, know. Great. Who who expected the Patriots defense to just you know be terrible now and just giving up twenty seven to the Jets? That's another team where it's like, man, their defense just sucks. Like, like how did this even happen? Bill Belichick, what are you doing, buddy? Um, let's look at these player props again via our friends at William Hill. Uh, what stands out to you, RJ, from a prop perspective? We had a heater on Monday night with that Jets game. Yeah, I like Tannehill. Um, his longest completion is listed at 37 and a half yards. I like going under that. I think it's minus 120 now. Indy's given up just two passes that long all year. And with A.J. Brown, you said he was on the injury report. He's dealing with a minor knee issue. Um, if he's not able to, you know, break coverage and, and break one long, um, that's even harder to hit the over because I don't know who would do it at that point. Um, you know, who's getting those, those long passes? Corey Davis had three targets for no catches last week. Uh, tight ends probably aren't going to do it. Indy's really good at covering tight end, and he's really good at, co- at covering uh, running backs, you know, limiting running backs too. So, um, yeah, this just seems like uh, a, if you're playing the percentages, under 37 and a half is going to come in more often than not here for Tannehill. I tend to agree with that. I like – the idea of going with Naheem Hines over receiving yards, probably receptions too. Now, this is a little, you have to assume that this is not going to just be a uh, Indianapolis bloodbath, because if that's the case, may, maybe you're in a little bit of trouble. But uh, looking at Naheem Hines' game log, 
So, and the over under here uh, at William Hill is uh, 22 and a half, I believe, which frankly is just too, it's too low. 22 and a half is just too low. If you look at his, if you look at his uh, game log, week one, eight catches, 45 yards. Uh, week three, four catches, 40 yards. Uh, he has had, he had one week where he went four and eight yards. Um, those were in the beatdowns of Minnesota and Chicago. And then against the last four games, 22, 27, 54, and 20. I mean, he's seeing at least three upwards of six targets per week from Phillip Rivers, who loves to throw swing passes to his running backs. And if you look at, uh, you know, some of we're seeing, you know, David Montgomery caught some, caught some balls against, uh, you know, for, against the Titans. Like Giovanni Bernard wasn't explosive in the, in the passing game, but he caught three passes. I just think there's a really easy path for uh, Naheem Hines to get over 22 and a half receiving yards. Agree? Yeah, uh, I was surprised they didn't use him much, as much last week. I figured with all the trouble they were having moving the ball on Baltimore, they would work that in and try to get him more in space, and that didn't happen, and he had three targets in that game. So um, I, I just worry with them. It just seems like it's kind of hit or miss whether he's involved in the game plan or not. So maybe he is this week, but I just think you can you can threaten Tennessee down the field defensively and threaten that secondary. So maybe it's more of a yeah, – But who situation. stretches the field for it, like for Indy? I mean, they don't have, they don't have, you know, it's just hard pinpointing anybody that's going to be the number one guy there because T.Y. Hilton hasn't lived up to his, you know, draft, fantasy draft billing this year. Um, and then it's just kind of mishmash of, of whoever's healthy. Um, so I don't know that you can expect anybody to get 120 yards, but, you, you know, you might get three or four receivers and tight ends at 50 yards, 60 yards, 70 yards. And then uh, there's not that much work for Heinz left over. Yeah. I mean, the, the other thing I would say too is that with John, I mean, what do we think is going to happen with Jonathan Taylor in this game? Because he had a crucial fumble against the, the Ravens that was taken back to the house. And really, I mean, Indy could have easily won that game against Baltimore. And they just got put in a bad spot by a bad officiating call and a, and a horrible fumble by uh, Taylor. Yeah, considering he's obviously a big part of their plans moving forward, he was a high draft pick. I don't think they can punish him too much. I can definitely see – the sense for benching him in game and not going to him much in that game. But at that, at some point, you know, you just got to be like, we can't have this guy stewing on the sidelines for weeks, not playing. Cause, uh, cause he had one mistake. We have to get, let him get out there and uh, make up for that mistake. So I, I don't think that he's going to be, you know, any less touches than he normally would be, which who knows, maybe it's mixing 50, 50 with Wilkins and then Hines gets a few carries, but either, either way, you know, I, he's just not written out of the game plan at this point. Uh, another one I might like on William Hill is over Philip Rivers passing attempts, 35 and a half. I think you see a pretty clear correlation with Rivers in games that are like one score or games that are kind of close where the, the one score games, well, the Baltimore game where they're, they're trailing, he threw 43 times against Cincinnati. They were trailing and it was a shootout. Uh, he threw 44 times. Week one against the Jaguars, they were you know, a, a competitive game. He threw 46 times. Now, when they beat teams down, Minnesota 25, the Jets 21, uh, Chicago 29. Weird game against Cleveland that I'm just going to sort of put off in the, the side, you know, where they kind of – it was a slog. They kind of got beat down, and he threw 33 times. I, I really think – and then against Detroit, they won by 20, and he threw 33 times. I really feel like this should be competitive enough and close enough that he gets somewhere in the range of 40 passes. Yeah, and that kind of leans into one other prop. I like his Rivers over one and a half touchdowns. It's, it's yeah. heavily juiced. It's minus 160. But he threw three touchdowns in back-to-back -back games before facing Baltimore, and that was obviously a, a, a not not a Tennessee type of matchup. You know, that's a much tougher matchup for him. And Tennessee's allowed 19 pass touchdowns to quarterbacks in eight weeks. I mean, you do the math there. It's a good chance he gets two or three touchdowns there. So I think um, it just sets up well for for them to attack through the air and throw a lot of touchdowns. So, yeah, I would go over on that. If, if, if you're a little hesitant with the attempts, maybe it's a little bit too high because that, that number seems around where it should be to me. And, um, and it's juiced to one, the over is juiced to 130. So, I mean, maybe it does make sense to go with the – the overpassing touchdowns. If you're, you know, if you're going to pay juice anyway, like I know it's an extra 30 cents and that's a lot, but you, he can get to two passing touchdowns with 20 passing attempts. Mm -hmm. He can get in the first half for sure. Right. Exactly. And that can cash quickly for you. Uh, anything else you like from a prop perspective? 
Yeah, if you go to the game props and you want to just have a little fun lottery ticket one, 17 to one, if you go to the double result section, that's basically what's the what's the, going to be the score at halftime or, you know, who's leading at halftime and who's lead, who wins the game. So you're you're picking the half in the game. Since this is a pick em game, it's supposed to be close. So if you want, if you like Indy or even if you like Tennessee, you can get 17, 17 and a half to one by doing tie as the halftime result and then one of those teams for the win. So I like going tie in Indy for plus 1700 and just, you know, rooting for a halftime tie. You know, it seems like something to, fun to root for near the end of the first half. You're a sicko if you're rooting for a halftime tie, but I like it. I like it. Um, just looking at the touchdown scores, anytime touchdown score, I think Derrick Henry's probably a little too expensive at minus 188, but I mean, he gets an insane amount of red zone touches. Like if they get in the red zone, Derrick Henry is getting fed. So is that too pricey to pay for you? Yeah, uh, it's a little too high considering how good Indy's defense is. If you're looking for just any time touchdown score, there's great value on Trey Burton at plus 275. Yeah. Um, he's going to get more looks with, with Jack Doyle out, we expect. Um, the tight end, and, and I think Mo Ali Cox is questionable. So if, if Mo Ali Cox plays, they'll both get a little bit more looks with um, Doyle out. But we got to expect Burton's going to get the bulk of the time there. And they've used him in the red zone as a running back, too. You know, they've, they've had him play wildcat and, and run the ball. So that's improved his odds of getting a touchdown. So plus 275 in this sense just seems way too high for me for a guy that's been heavily involved near the goal line. I agree. Yeah, they do the, um, I guess it's the Philly special such a move, right? So did he, um, was it an end around on Philly special? Yeah, no, it's he just he lines up at quarterback and he takes the snap. Yeah, it's well, yeah, so yeah, Wildcat direct snap because yeah, you know Rivers isn't out there, right? Yeah, since you know he can throw because the Philly special, you have to respect the throw a little bit. Yeah, um, but he typically but, and runs it. Burton in. was a quarterback in either high school or college. Yeah, I think high school. Yeah, sort of like the I don't know if you know this, but Ryan, Fitz, Ryan Fitzpatrick went to Harvard. No way. It's and, the first time, uh, Jimmy first time I heard it. basketball player in uh, high school. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess that I guess that the uh, the Philly the Trey Burton thing is less beat into the ground. Um, I, I agree that that's a that's you're getting almost three to one. I love that. I don't hate Janu Smith either at two to one. They seem to feature him in the red zone a ton. And I any idea on first touchdown score? Uh, AJ Brown nine to one isn't terrible, but he's going to need to break a long one, I mean, which he just does all the time. Actually, Trey Burton at 16 to 1 first touchdown score. What are we talking about? Yeah, I would play that if I'm playing one of the first touchdowns. And the All thing right. with Janu is you would expect Janu. I wanted to go over on his props um, because with Adam Humphreys out, um, he you just figure Janu's gonna feature more when he's not on the field. But uh the Indy's just really good at tight ends. I think they're they're one of the top uh, as far as yardage goes, two or three teams that were do at that not giving up tight end yardage. And then I don't even know if they've uh, given up a touchdown to a tight end all year. So wow. it's just a really tough matchup for them. Uh, okay. So let's, we're going to go with as our sort of, just to do a recap to give the props to people. So we like, uh, I forgot your first one already. Somehow Tannehill under 37 and a half yards for longest completion. Thank you. Uh, we also like Naheem. I like Naheem Hines over receiving yards. And we both like Philip Rivers over passing touchdowns, one and a half. It is minus 160, so you have to pay for it, but you can get there in the first half. I still like over passing attempts. That's game script dependent, obviously. Um, and I, I don't think you can – you can definitely play both of those, and that's not a problem. And then Trey Burton, first touchdown score, and any time touchdown score. Uh, the one other one that I might throw out there is – so those are all the props we're going with. How about Marcus Johnson under 28 and a half yards? Is that too low? Um, it, it's, it, you know, he, he's been a little bit more involved. So we'll see with, with Hilton back on the field, you know, just with those guys, they might get two targets. They might get three targets. They have to really do something with the ones they get. So um, yeah. I think he did have a lot of targets last week with, um, you know, Hilton uh, hurt. Um, I think it was nine, but he didn't do much with them, you know, three or four catches. So if you're not, if you're not that reliable for the, uh, the quarterback, you know, they, they're going to look somewhere else eventually. Okay. So I'm going to take, I'm going to, I'm going to add on to the list of props that I will be playing in this game. These are not, I'm not locking these onto RJ. These are all on me. So you just heard the original list. We're going to add Marcus Johnson under receiving yards, 28 and a half. And also, I'm going to throw on, because this correlates to what we were talking about before, Trey Burton over receptions, two and a half. The Rivers love short yardage passes to tight ends and, and, and running backs. And if Mo'Ally Cox is questionable, we think he'll play. 
But you go ahead and get that in now. If Molly Cox is out, Trey Burton's going to get six, five, six, seven targets at least. Mm -hmm. And I think tight ends light up the Titans. Am I crazy? Might be crazy. I don't think it's it's like top five or anything. I think they're middle of the pack, but they're certainly not something you would avoid like you would in Indy with some of these matchups. All right, let's do DFS. So on the showdown slate, and I have, if, by the way, on the, uh, on the golf stuff, stop the count. Stop the count. I'm, I'm, I'm winning. I'm like tripling up my money right now with the, uh, in the rain delay, Charles Howell out on the course. Well, Chucky three sticks in with a bar. Corey Connors in with a bar. I got, I got two co-leaders right now. Um, Ryan Tannehill, the most expensive captain, 16, eight, Derek Henry at 16, two, AJ Brown, 15, six, Phillip rivers, 14, seven, Jonathan Taylor, 13, two, Corey Davis, 11, seven, Johnny Smith, 10, five, and then you get to Zach Pascal and Naheem Hines. Um, you know, if you're, I don't know that you, you have to go with a uh, Colts captain, even if you think the Colts are winning, do you? I don't think so. It just depends on how good you think the indie defense is going to be against that Tennessee offense. I think they're going to be pretty good. So I'm not really looking at those top Tennessee options. So I would go rivers. I think he's the most obvious caption. We talked about, he's going to throw multiple touchdowns. We're, we're pretty sure it's juiced to him throwing multiple touchdowns. So if you're just looking to get into the, the cash, you're not really looking to win number one in a GPP necessarily. Then I think rivers is your safest play there for captain. Okay. And if you go rivers at captain, it does allow you to, I mean, I think you kind of have to roster Derek. Could you can you fade Derrick Henry? Yeah, I, I don't see why not. I mean, that's probably the safest play because you just know he's going to get a ton of attempts. So if you're on the Tennessee side, that's going to be your safest play because he's got to get to, you know, at least 50, 60 yards. So he's not going to give you a zero or anything. And we saw, I mean, look, if you played him last week on the main slate, like me, instead of Dalvin Cook, you lost a pile of cash. And so there is the option to to say, look, DeForest Buckner and Darius Slender are going to are going to stop Derrick Henry from breaking a big run and prevent him from being able to get into the end zone in the red zone. And if that happens, I mean, he's going to be wildly owned on this slate because it's a, it's a showdown and he's Derek freaking Henry. So there is some flexibility there in terms of fading him and you can get some leverage on it by going with, let's see, your rivers is captain. Who would you have? What do you think? Trey Burton? Put Burton in there and see what happens. Yeah, Burton's kind of my sleep. If you want to go off the beaten path, Burton's my sleeper captain. We talked about he's he's involved in the red zone, so he could get two touchdowns in this game, and all of a sudden you have a you have a multi touchdown game from a guy that nobody else has a captain. So I don't think he could even be the lead target. You know, if if, if Mo Ali Cox is less than one hundred percent, even if he does play, um, Burton's going to get a lot of looks there, and we just don't know what's going to happen at receiver. So I can see Burton having one of those seven or eight catch games for you know ninety something yards and a couple touchdowns, maybe one rushing, um, and then uh, yeah. Uh, you're you're sitting pretty with the captain spot there and suffice to say if you have trey burton as your captain you can do whatever you want around him mm -hmm. um, rivers is captain i don't mind going with rivers as captain trey burton naheem hines as, as flex spots and then coming back with Tannehill and aj brown who just has explosive potential in, in a possible catch-up spot and then you can tack on khalif raymond as an extra uh, receiver. In, we mentioned Corey Davis illness. You know, I don't know how much is going to affect him, but obviously Adam Humphrey's out. Maybe he gets a little bit more run and you said Colts are good against tight ends. So you avoid Johnny Smith thoughts on that. And then your other, um, you know, kind of, uh, out there play at captain is the Colts defense. If you really do think the Colts defense is going to shut down Tennessee, wow. it's a great matchup. Nobody's going to want to use them because I think when you, when you, you know, you have their rankings next to how they performed, I think Tennessee's was like third. So nobody's going to want them. But if that Colts defense gets going against a, 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 a Tennessee offensive line that's missing its best player with Luan out for the year and Leonard just wreaking havoc, then, I mean, they could have a big game. And if you get, if you get a defensive touchdown somewhere along the way, and it's just a bad game for Tennessee. Nobody's going to have them in the captain spot. That's 100% correct. And then if, yeah, this is not a spot where people will want to play the Colts defense at captain. I like it. All right, RJ. Uh, any, oh, any deep sleepers? Yeah, Freeman, would, uh, Jeremy, Mc, Mc, Jeremy McNichols is a guy you could look at. I think he's 300 bucks. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else I saw that was cheap. I don't, there's not a ton of cheap options in the slate. Like I mean, Raymond's 1500. I mean, I think I don't, I don't, I don't hate the idea of having Rodrigo, uh, Rodrigo Blankenship at six thousand and Stephen Goskowski at fifty seven hundred on here. I think it's a game kickers can score in. Yeah, it could be a good game for kickers. The one cheap option I don't have any in the three two hundred three hundred dollar range. Um, 
but to Michael Harris is $1,800. He's a guy who plays last week. And I was like, I have no idea who this guy is, which usually, you know, at least I have some <laughs> idea when they play, but he got six touches. He, he, you know, they engineered ways to get him the ball running, passing, you know, and get him in open field. I think he could engineer a big play here against a mediocre defense. And all of a sudden he's, you know, 50 yards down the field for a touchdown. Um, so they like him. They elevated him to the active roster over the week. So they must have plans for him moving forward, especially in a, in an offense where there's no really established receivers playing well. I like Zach Pascal. He seems to be the most consistent option, and I think he can outplay his price tag here too. Um, he's had six-plus targets and three straight. He's the most reliable option for me besides Burton. So if I'm playing a lineup that doesn't have the the defense or, or crazy stuff at the top, I can go Rivers at captain. I can get Burton, Pascal, and Harris in there, and then I can circle back around and get uh, Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown and just see um, you got kind of both of the guys that are going to do anything for Tennessee um, in there to, to be your fade in case you don't think the Colts defense is going to be amazing. I like it. All right. There's the uh, DFS strategy for the, for tonight. A bunch of props that we gave out. I got to make sure I don't have them up on my site yet, but I will, I will be putting all those in shortly. RJ as always a pleasure. Make sure you go to sportsline.com. Now, now is the time to go to sportsline.com because and you go to sportsline.com slash join, use promo code white and you get your first month for a dollar. In addition to getting that, you will also get a CBS All Access subscription. You can watch local NFL games uh, streamed on your on your Fire Stick, Roku, wherever else. You can watch the Chappelle Show on there. You can watch RuPaul's Drag Race. You can also um, you can also stream the Masters on the CBS Sports app. And on Sportsline, there'll be a ton of uh, we have lineup optimizers right now. Uh, all of Mike McClure's uh, exposure rankings and all of that. So if you're into DFS and you're looking for a great resource, it's a dollar for a month. Go check it out. RJ, talk to you later, buddy.